Welcome everybody to this second webinar of a series dealing about our benchtop instruments that perform flow chemistry. So I'm Matthew, uh, an application chemist at Thales Nano and I will hold the first part of this webinar. So today we are going to talk about hydrogenation reactions on a HQ Pro. So Let's go through the plan of this presentation. So I will first give you a short introduction and then a quick reminder of the continuous flow chemistry. We will then go through the key advantages of the HQ Pro before talking about chemistry, detailing some examples of reactions that has been performed on the HQ Pro. So then my colleague Gellert here in the lab with me will perform a reaction a live reaction while explaining in detail how the HQ Pro work. So feel free to send us your questions during all this presentation and we will be happy to answer them. For your information, this webinar is going to last about 60 or 70 minutes, including the Q&A Q section. So first, I'd like to give you a recap of the previous episode. What happened? So we had an overview of the company and the group and the portfolio and we talked about the different chemical applications that was available with our range of instruments. We highlighted the benefits of doing flow chemistry over batch chemistry. We talked about hydrogenation reactions and then we performed a reduction of nitro indole in life, but this time on the H cube mini plus, which is, we can say, the little brother of the H cube pro, the instrument we are going to talk today. So do not worry, it's not an episode of Game of Thrones, so you don't need to have seen the previous one in order to understand this one but it may still be interesting to watch it if you want more detail or complementary information about the chemistry and continuous flow chemistry. We will put the link in the video description, but please wait for the end of this one because you will get the possibility to directly interact with us by asking your question. Okay, now, Few words about Thales Nano. Who are we? What do we do? So we are making laboratory reactors that chemists can use to create new drugs, new aromas, new chemicals, or even new processes. So you can see some important figures of the company and the profile picture of our best seller product, the HQ Pro. So Let's now have a quick look at our portfolio. So we have a wide range of instruments for different kinds of needs. For, for example, for really exothermic reaction, we have the ice cube, which can go down to minus 70 degrees Celsius. Now on the other side of the spectrum of temperature for, for high energy reaction, so we have the Phoenix and the Flash Pyrolysis platform. So now, if you want to work with gases at more reasonable temperature, you have the H cube family, and the H cube Pro belongs here. Um, a very relevant combination, if you are aiming to scale up, is the Phoenix plus the Edgeny. The Edgeny which can also be used as a standalone um, hydrogen generator. So besides those instruments, we have few other modules that can be used to extend the possibilities of the instruments. And also our lastly developed product, the PhotoCube, to do photochemistry in both batch and flow mode with different wavelength, but no more spoilers, um, since we will talk about it in our very next webinar next week. So let's go uh, into 
the scientific heart of this presentation now. So a quick reminder about flow chemistry first. So a short and simplified definition to help you better picturing it could be an ongoing mixture of reagents and solvent for a continuous synthesis. So it is at the very least a pump and a reactor, but it can be much more complex than that. And it can have a couple of pumps, reactors, mixer, a back pressure regulator if you want to build pressure inside your system. Uh, you can have a mass flow controller uh, if you link, if you want to link a gas cylinder to your system in order to inject gases. You can have uh, an automation part or even an analytical tool uh, built in, in your system if you are aiming to follow up your reaction, the formation of your products. So eventually, it is three important parameters to remember. A residence time, which is the reaction time basically, a temperature and a pressure control. Those are the physical parameters you have to play with and fine tune in order uh, to improve and to get a better selectivity and a better yield. Okay, let's now talk about the key advantages of doing flow chemistry with the HQ Pro. So the hydrogen that is produced in real time on demand by electrolysis of water. So this improves significantly the safety. And thanks to this process, is so no need for cylinders, for hydrogen cylinders. No large volume and no catalyst handlings, neither. But I will come back to this point in a couple of seconds. It also shows an improved heat transfer and mixing. And I gave more information on this on the previous webinar by comparing the heat transfer and mixing in both uh, continuous flow chemistry and batch chemistry. The selectivity is also improved thanks to the residence time and the temperature, and the reaction times are shorter. Eventually, as I just said, um, there is no catalyst handlings. As the catalyst is sealed into those cartridges, you can see here, two of them. So in those cartridges, um, the catalyst cannot uh, remain in those cartridges during all the reaction. That means uh, you don't have any walk-up at, at the end of the reaction. You don't need to filtrate the catalyst. Okay, let's now talk about chemistry. All the following reaction I'm going to show you in, the, in this slide and in the next slide have been done using uh, H-cube instruments. So I'm not going to, to detail like all of the reaction, but I'm going to, to go into some, some of them. So you can do different kind of hydrogenation. For example, if you aim to do nitrile reduction, so this methoxy naphtone nitrile was reduced with Rhine nickel at 80 degrees Celsius and 50 bars to give a 88% yield. You can also perform, for example, um, saturation of heterocycle with harsher condition, but still totally manageable, doable with the HQ Pro, since um, it is far from being the harshest, because you could go up until um, 150 degrees and 100 bars with the HQ Pro alone. So a series of nicotinic acids has been reduced and showed a minimum conversion of 95% and a yield of 74%. So then the third reaction, it's a debenzylation performed by Desai and Cape uh, to produce dehydropyrimidine carboxylic acids. And it showed a 95% yield in those conditions. For comparison, 
the microwave version of this synthesis showed a lower yield of about 62% and it took 8 to 10 hours. You can also perform other kind of deprotection reaction, not only debenzylation, but you can do debenzyl oxyl carbonyl to deprotect nitrogen, among others. So the, the Maklowski group, I've been doing some very interesting work that I think can help you to understand the importance of the parameters as well as the importance of the catalyst. So let's focus on those three functional groups you can see here highlighted in color. So you have a feranyl ring in red, uh, in purple a double bond, and in blue the nitrile group. So all can potentially be reduced. And if we applied even harsher condition, you would be able to reduce the methoxy phenyl ring. But it was not part of the study here. So let's say, okay, if we apply 60 degrees and 60 bars uh, with a Rhiney nickel catalyst, and of course under hydrogen, you would reduce all three parts with a 100% yield. But let's, uh, let be a bit, uh, let's be a bit more selective and let's say you want to uh, keep this fernil ring intact. So it can be done even using the same catalyst, Rhiney nickel. But then uh, that means you have to play with your parameters, so temperature and pressure. And so it has been achieved with a 91% yield at 50 degrees and a quite low um, pressure of 10 bars. Let's say now uh, we want to focus on the nitrile and this is an important functional group in our molecule. So how can we keep it and reducing the two other uh, functional groups? So it has been done with a Perlman's catalyst in those conditions uh, with a 96% yield. Eventually, with the mildest condition and only a 10% hydrogen flow, we can mod modestly reduce the double bond leaving all the other group untouched, so with a 100% uh, yield. You have to know this 10% of hydrogen flow because with the H2 Pro you can manage the quantity of hydrogen you want to inject into your system. Maybe you have noticed here, but the flow rate is higher than in the other reaction and this is indeed a very important parameter to take into account as the flow rate impacts directly your residence time and then your selectivity. And I guess if you, you would have leave uh, a flow rate of one milliliter per minute, you wouldn't have obtained a hundred percent yield of this product because you would have some byproduct and some reduction, maybe of the feranyl ring or nitrile group. So, that is one big advantage, advantage of flow chemistry and the HQ Pro, an easy screening of conditions and the materials. Now, speaking of screening, let's go through this work of Givaudan. So, the synthesis of pashminol, which is an aroma used in fragrance. So, you have this starting material. So the biggest challenge here is how to reduce the cyclopentene group without uh, touching into the three-membered ring, which is a strain cycle and relatively reactive. So to do, in order to do this, you need to screen uh, the best condition and the catalyst. And the best one were found under an atmospheric pressure of one bar and 80 degrees with just simply Rhiney nickel. So it gave a 80, 87% yield. So this screening could have been done 
even during a day and even a, during a couple of hours. So now it doesn't stop uh, to hydrogen reactions only. For example, cross couplings are also possible on the H2 Pro. For this type of reaction, you don't need hydrogen, so you can just turn it off. And using different conditions, you can, for example, perform the Sonogashira reaction uh, using a palladium anchored catalyst in the presence of a base. And it, in a similar, very similar way, you can also do the Suzuki reaction. That gives you a 68% yield here in those conditions. Another specialty of this instruments, it is deterioration reaction. Indeed, the H2 being produced by the electrolysis of water, you just need to replace the water in the water tank by heavy water, so D2O, and it will give you D2 instead of H2. And here uh, you can see an example performed by the Professor Philip and his team. He fine-tuned the condition in order to find the best one to perform a single reduction of the alkyne on one side and the complete reduction of the, on the other side. So he could achieve it using different catalysts, of course, and different conditions. So for the single reduction on the upper part, uh, he could achieve it with a 100% pure product using um, a catalyst, a Rosenmund catalyst, and relatively high condition. Now, uh, for the fully reduced alkyne, the best screen condition he found but with the untouched alpha carbonyl, it led to a 68% yield. Besides, we have also investigated um, different types of reactions. I'm not going to detail each of them, but of course you will have different starting materials, but this can show you uh, some good starting conditions. So for example, a good starting point for reductive amination would be Rhiney nickel or a 10% palladium on carbon at 40 degrees. But if you are looking for a way to reduce a nitro group but that is in the presence of an halogen, you don't want a competitive dehalogenation reaction to occur. So you should think about using ruthenium on carbon catalyst or a ruthenium oxide depending on the halogen. Uh, also, we earlier uh, talked about debenzylation, but if it's not the aim of your uh, synthesis right now, and you are just looking to reduce a carbonyl, so leaving your uh, acid carboxylic protected, you should start investigating with a uh, catalyst 10% platinum on carbon. Eventually, um, you can simply uh, start using Rhiney nickel if you want uh, to reduce your thiol. This is actually an extract of a bigger reaction guide sheet we provide and that are also preset in the HQ Pro. I mean, the conditions here are uploaded into the HQ Pro software to make it easier. But my colleague uh, will tell you more about it uh, when he describes the HQ Pro. Okay, um, now before giving the word to my colleague, uh, let me show you a short animation that I think we, will help you uh, to better visualize the path and the flow of the reactants and product through the instruments. So you can see the HQ Pro here. I'm not going to go into the, the detail because my colleague will do it, but I think it can help you visualizing. So let's start our reaction. And you have the reactants, the solution of reactants in red, and our product will be in blue. So it is, it's been aspirating by the HPLC pump, and then 
you can see our product uh, carries on onto the HQ Pro. It goes through the mixer unit, a bubble detector, a connection point before going to the header block where the reaction happens into the card cart. And now you can see the product has been eluted, so it's in blue. So it goes through the back pressure regulator before going to the outlet valve, which goes into your collection flask to collect your product. Okay, now I'm giving the word to my colleague, Gellert. Thank you. Hello everyone, hopefully you can see and hear me clearly. Now I will begin the demonstration using the HQ Pro. So next to me I have the HQ Mini Plus and the HQ Pro, just to give you a better comparison between the two instruments. So both of these instruments generate hydrogen gas from water by electrolysis. The water tank of the HQ Pro is located at the back and the electrolysis happens inside the unit. In terms of uh, hydrogen producing capabilities, the two instruments uh, differ uh, from each other a little bit. The Pro can generate 60 milliliter of hydrogen per minute, while the Mini can generate only 25 to 30 milliliters per minute. In addition to that, uh, you can also regulate the amount of the hydrogen inside the pro which gets introduced into the reaction line. So you can use, for example, 30 milliliter of hydrogen per minute or 60 or 10 and so on. <clears throat> this is done using a unit which we call the bubble detector, which measures the gas liquid ratio in our system. In, ter in terms of heating capabilities, the Mini can operate between 25 and 100 degrees Celsius, while the Pro can work between 10 degrees Celsius and 150 degrees. So it can go a bit lower and a bit higher as well in terms of temperature range. Uh, in terms of pressure, both instruments are able to cope with up to 100 bar pressure. However, in the Mini, we have only one uh, pressure measuring point, point, which is here we measure the inlet pressure. In the Pro, we have two pressure sensors, one for the inlet pressure and one for the back pressure. The final difference which I want to highlight is the presence of these two valves. These are switch valves, which help you to perform your reactions more conveniently. I remove now the H-Cube Mini Plus and show you that we have two flasks. One of them, the Erlenmeyer, contains just uh, methanol as a solvent, and the small one contains our uh, solution of uh, the starting material. Using this valve, you can switch between the reactant or solvent line, or you can switch between the product and waste, so this gives you easier handling. In terms, of, uh, in terms of the flow pass, we go from right to left, very similar to the way as it is done in the HQ Mini. So we have a flask, then we have the valve, and from the valve, a tube goes into the pump. From the pump, the liquid gets delivered into the inlet pressure sensor, and from there, we arrive to the gas liquid mixer. This is the point where hydrogen gas gets introduced into the system. So from this point, the gas liquid or hydrogen liquid mixture goes through the bubble detector, which measures the gas liquid ratio and it gives us a percentage value. From there, we go into this connection block. We have two of these. These can be used to connect other devices 
to the HQ Pro. Such device is the Phoenix Flow Reactor. If you connect the Phoenix Flow Reactor using the tubing here and here, you can not only physically connect the tubing, but you can also connect the Phoenix to the HQ Pro software, and then you can control the instrument from the HQ Pro. We will focus on that later on in our upcoming webinars. So from this connection point, the liquid gas mixture goes through the cat cart heater. I will show you the cartridge later on. And then we again go into a pressure sensor, but now we are at the back pressure sensor. From the back pressure sensor, we arrive to the back pressure valve. And after that, again, we have a switch valve. Uh, at this point, the solution is already at normal pressure or just at the pressure which is generated by the flow rate. And after that point, we just have a flask where we collect our material. So now let's look at the software of the HQ Pro. We have four key parameters to set uh, through the software. The flow rate, the temperature, the pressure, and the hydrogen amount. Three of these are displayed here. Flow rate, pressure, temperature. The hydrogen amount can be set through the info tab. Before I go to that, I will start uh, my demo reaction. As you can see, now the system is running. We have a 1 milliliter per minute flow rate, 20 bar pressure, 70 degrees Celsius temperature. Now you will be able to see the dimmer reaction which we will perform today. This is the reduction of quinoxalin. We will perform a par partial reduction to tetrahydroquinoxalin using palladium on charcoal as a catalyst. The reaction conditions are 70 degrees Celsius, 20 bar pressure, 1 milliliter per minute flow rate, and that concentration will be 0.05 molar concentration in methanol. Because the starting material and the product are uh, basically colorless, I also brought you an HPLC chromatograph after uh, such hydrogenation reaction. You can see that the product can be produced in 98% uh, purity without any purifications. Using palladium hydroxide catalyst, it's also possible to perform full uh, reduction of quinoxalin, but we will not focus on that today. So now we go back to the software and I will click on reactant, which means that our switch valve changes and now the, not the solvent will be delivered by the pump, but the solution of our starting material. The HQ Pro has an approximately 4 milliliter dead volume. Most of this comes from the tubing, the plastic tubing, which leads to the pump uh, for liquid delivery. So if we have a 4 milliliter dead volume, and we have a one milliliter flow rate per minute. That means that our residence time in the whole system takes around four minutes. This residence time is not equal to the residence time in the cat card, which is in the seconds, a couple of seconds range. I will inject the starting material for around two to three minutes through the system before and then I will change back to solvent and at the same time I will also change from waste to product on the outlet end. So this will ensure that I will collect all of uh, our reduced product and nothing will go into waste. Until we wait that other minute or so, 
I show you a couple of uh, information windows on the main screen. Up here, you can see the message stable, which means that our system is re ready to uh, perform hydrogenations. If some kind of conditions are still in uh, the setting off phase, you would see another message here like stabilizing, pressure building, temperature setting, and so on. The HV Pro also has some inbuilt timer settings. So I would be able to set up the instrument in a way that I don't need to do manually this reactant to solvent and product to waste change. In the meantime, I'm changing back to solvent and to product collection. Now going further with the software, I will now go to the info window. In the info window, we get we can get detailed information on the current status of the instrument. Here you can see different temperature readings, pressure readings at various points of the instrument, uh, like inlet pressure, back pressure, and the hydrogen pressure in the cell. You can also read uh, information on valve positions. You can see whether a valve is closed or open, and you can see the value for the gas liquid ratio here at the bottom. On the top right of this screen, you can see the place where you can set the amount of the hydrogen. Currently, it is set to 100%, but you can decrease this amount to 10, 50, or whatever percent you like. If you set it to 50, then you would, for example, have 30 milliliter hydrogen introduced into the reaction line per minute. Currently, we introduce 60 mils per minute. If you go to the graph window, we get real-time information on uh, what is happening in the system. You can set a different uh, a number of parameters to visualize, like uh, pressures, temperature readings, valve positions, or the bubble value. Currently, here, the bubble percentage is shown and the system pressure. The bubble percentage is shown in black. The system pressure is in blue color at the bottom. The log window is very similar to the graph window, but it does not show real-time data. It shows you reaction data previously performed using the instrument. You can open such data or such graphs. You can export them or delete them. If you want to export, then you need to plug in a pen drive or USB stick to your instrument. This is not included now, so we got an error message. Let's go now to the events window. The events window shows us timestamped text information about our system. Here, every uh, change in conditions is uh, recorded. Informations can include informations like user set valve to waste or user press start, the system started, and so on. Another window or tab up here is the service tab. Here you can get information on the current software versions in your instrument. And also we have up on the top right corner an error description window. For example, if you forgot to connect your HPLC pump to the HQ Pro, you will get a, a pop-up window with an error saying that the pump is not connected. If you click OK on that, you can still later on read the error description in uh, this area in, at the service tab. The final tab here is called external. 
As I mentioned, you can connect the Phoenix flow reactor or the gas module to the HQ Pro. If you do that, you click scan here and then a list of connected instruments will appear. Then you can connect those and use this screen to control the Phoenix reactor or the gas module. Now we go back to our main screen. The, a couple of minutes has passed since I changed to product, so I now will change back to waste. And I will show you how can you alter certain conditions uh, if you want to perform a new reaction. You have stop, stop and keep and pause. If you click stop, the system will completely finish every operations. The pump will stop, the, all the pressures will be released, the heating will be stopped as well. If you click stop and keep, the pressure inside the hydrogen cells, which is displayed here, currently at 36 bar, will kept uh, stable, 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 but all other parameters will stop and the system pressure will be released as well. If you want to start your next experiment at 40 bars or so, the stop and key function is quite useful because it will take you less time to build up the pressure, the hydrogen pressure, which is needed for your next experiment. Finally, we have the pause button here. This will allow us, I will click on it now, and this will allow us to change the temperature, pressure, and the flow rate. For example, I lower the temperature to 20, 30 degrees. I will set the pressure to one bar. I go to the info window and set the hydrogen amount to 50 percent. So now that I set these values, if I click resume, then the system will start cooling, the pressure will be released, and also the hydrogen amount which is introduced into the reaction line will uh, be decreased to 50 percent. Before I click on resume, I want to show you a couple other functions. Here you can see reaction parameters. In reaction parameters, we have a list of predefined conditions for certain chemical transformations to perform. For example, we have procedures for OD benzylation with a one bar pressure, 60 degree Celsius temperature, one milliliter per minute flow rate, and with the recommended catalyst, 10% palladium and charcoal. So if you have no experience in flow chemistry, this set of conditions can be quite useful to get an idea on how to start a reaction. You can also define your own parameters here. And if you have to perform, let's say, a nitrile reduction every week or so, you don't always need to type in those reaction conditions again, but you can just preload them. I will click on cancel now and let's go back here. The other tab or button here is calculations. Uh, there is an inbuilt algorithm or software which uses the simplex algorithm for reaction condition optimization. So we can define a set of parameters which we want to optimize, pressure, temperature, and flow rate. If I click new optimization, oh, sorry. Yes. Okay, if I click start optimization, this software will, allow me, will offer me a number of conditions to start with. I just need to perform these four reactions and then type in the results. And based on that, or based on those results, the algorithm will offer us a new set of conditions which we should test. So this can save some time if you want to optimize a reaction. 
So we went through the software. Now I click resume. And then, just as a reminder, the system will start to cool down to 30 degrees. We are currently at 70. The pressure will be dropped down to one bar instead of nine uh, instead of 20 so let's click on resume <clears throat> and that brings us to the end of the live demonstration while the system is working on this um, or actually i will just stop uh, doing uh, setting up the new conditions because i still want to show you how to change the catalyst cartridge in the system. And for that, we need to stop the reactor working. So while we are waiting for uh, the heater unit to cool down, we will focus on the questions and answer section. Let, please give me a minute to review the questions and then I will start answering. So the first question which I see is, can we use H cube to perform general flow chemistry reactions? I mean, any reaction in clear solution from form, can we replace batch to flow? Uh, theoretically, the answer is yes, uh, but I cannot uh, say that you would be able to do this with all types of reactions. Uh, hope this is a recorded webinar to download later. Yes, we record the webinar and you can uh, download or uh, at least view it later. What will be the maximum concentration uh, can be used? So the typical concentration you uh, range to work in the HQ Pro is going from 0.05 molar to, to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, sometimes even 0 0.5 molar concentration. Uh, the actual concentration will depend on uh, your specific problem. Uh, you, so the next question is uh, whether you can use the HQ Pro to perform only deuterated reactions or deuterations and whether there is any negative impact on the electrodes. Uh, the important thing is that you need to use high quality uh, D2O for your purposes. So try to best, try to buy the best uh, D2O available uh, on the market. Can we see a cartridge? Yes, you can. So let me just take a look. Yeah, the temperature is 56 degrees. I can handle that. So here we have a little screw which closes the door. And now here we have a 70 millimeter long cartridge. This screw up here is finger tight. So I can just use my finger to untighten it. And then I am able to remove the cartridge. So this is a 70 millimeter long cartridge. It contains approximately, let's say 350 milligrams of uh, palladium on charcoal. I will get a smaller cartridge as well. Just give me a second. So this one here is just a 30 millimeter long version. Uh, I need both of them. So now you can compare their si relative sizes. Obviously the small ones will fit much smaller amount of catalyst. If you want to place a cartridge in, 
what you need to do is you put in your cartridge you keep it here with your hand and tighten it a little bit but not too strong close the door and then a little bit more tight and then you can start your next uh, reaction Uh, the next question is whether the Phoenix, it's about the F Phoenix reactor. Can the Phoenix do all the things that the H cube does? Well, the Phoenix doesn't have uh, inbuilt hydrogen generation. So I either need to use an H Gini, for example, to generate hydrogen, or you need a gas cylinder, or you need the H cube pro to produce hydrogen apart from hydrogen generation, in principle, the Phoenix can do all the tasks which the H-Cube uh, does. Uh, one more comment about this. So the H-Cube Pro is really dedicated to easy and quick hydrogenations. Uh, in principle, to perform a hydrogenation with the H-Cube Pro takes you, in most cases, less than an hour with the Phoenix, you would need much more preparation, except if you dedicate your instrument for hydrogenations. Is there means to control the integrity of the catalyst during a reaction, like a measurement of hydrogen consumption? Uh, we cannot measure the hydrogen consumption in the HQ Pro. Uh, in terms of the catalyst integrity, uh, your catalyst lifetime, I guess that's the question. Your catalyst lifetime will depend on the reaction which you are performing. So some materials uh, would poison the catalyst. And let's say that you would be able to reduce just 50 milligrams of those um, tiles, maybe or generally sulfur containing compounds, but some materials can be reduced in big quantities on small cartridges. Even you can use sometimes a cartridge for grams of, uh, to produce grams of products. What is the life cycle of cartridge and how to identify the cartridge has lost its catalyst activity? Uh, so I just answered basically uh, about the life cycle, how to identify that the cartridge has lost its uh, activity. Uh, you need to monitor the conversion and that's how you can gain information on the catalyst activity. So we have no way to analyze the catalyst quality inside the cartridge. Um, If one electrode goes bad, can the instrument uh, generate hydrogen? Uh, in the Pro, we have two uh, electrocatalytic cells. Uh, I'm not aware that of, of uh, examples when one of them went bad. Uh, I would need to check this with our service engineers. So please allow us to to answer this question in email later on. Um, for a 30 millimeter cartridge, how much sample maximum used to perform reaction? And in case of 70 millimeter, how much? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a general answer for that question. Uh, it again it again depends on the difficulty of uh, of the reaction to perform. Uh, in principle, if your catalyst doesn't, uh, if your catalyst activity doesn't drop during a process, uh, you can use the 30 millimeter long or the 70 millimeter long, and you will see no difference in terms of lifetime. But uh, that would be quite a rare occasion. And the other aspect, which is important, that because let's say that the 70 millimeter long cartridge is twice the size of the 30 millimeter long one, 
uh, you would have with the same flow rate, you would have a much shorter residence time on the 30 millimeter long one than on the 70 millimeter long one. So, so you would need to either adjust the concentrations or the flow rate to keep the same cons uh, conversion rates using both cartridges. Amount of catalyst can be filled in 30 and 70 millimeter long cartridges. As I said, in terms of palladium on charcoal, there is approximately 350 milligrams of catalyst inside a 70 millimeter long cartridge. For a 30 millimeter long one, it would be around 100 to 150 milligrams. But I should also note that, for example, if you fill the cartridge with granite nickel, you would have a much higher uh, filling mass compared to palladium or charcoal, which is quite, let's say, fluffy and low density. Any, any specific reason for not recommended to general flow reactions? Uh, I guess this question refers to the previous one uh, on, on what kind of reactions can be performed on the H-cube. So the H-cube Pro has a catalyst cartridge and basically it will be fine for those kind of applications or it will be ideal for those kind of applications which need a catalyst cartridge. If you have a homogeneous reaction which requires 16 or 30 minute residence time, let's say, it would be very difficult to perform on the HQ Pro because you would need to operate the instrument with really low flow rates and then your throughput would be really small. So that's an example. And for that, I would, for example, recommend the Phoenix flow reactor for homogeneous reactions with fairly long uh, reaction time, like 15 to uh, 120 minutes or so. Can I reactivate or repack cartridge by myself? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, do that if you have a method for reactivating the catalyst. Uh, to repack, uh, you need a special tool to seal the cartridges. This is called the cat card packer. So we, we offer that opportunity to ask our customers to buy empty cartridges, which they can fill and seal. So you would be able to also use your own catalyst, which you have developed, prepared, and fill that into our cartridges. How the temperature is controlled? There is a heater block inside uh, this unit and that's how we, we control it. We have three temperature measurements along uh, this unit. How can I pack cartridge by myself if I already have catalyst? As I said, uh, you need to use the cat card packer to, to seal uh, the cartridges. Otherwise, you just... Uh, what you would receive is typically you, you get or you buy one of these cartridges, but on the top of the cartridge, you, would, you wouldn't have the seals installed. So you just place your catalyst inside, you put in the, uh, the filters or membranes, and then you put in the Teflon seal and use the cat card packer to close it. It's a fairly simple process. Uh, what is the cost of prepacked palladium and renonical cartridges? I am not familiar with the prices. The prices also depend on the actual market. So please uh, drop our sales uh, team an email and they will give you detailed pricing. They also need to know uh, the size of the cartridge 
which you are interested in. So obviously the size for, for a 30 millimeter one cartridge uh, differs from a 70 millimeter one. When we have to replace the water from tank, uh, if we keep water for longer time, it can damage my electrodes. Uh, so if you don't use your instrument for a couple of weeks, it is recommended to replace the water because otherwise, uh, even if you started with uh, high quality milliq water, for example, uh, after some time, biological organizations would, would uh, start to leave there uh so so yes it is recommended to replace the water if you don't use your instrument if you use your instrument on a regular basis uh you would anyway consume the water inside and um, yeah please just always make sure that you keep it clean the water tank has a little cap on the top uh which we should uh, be left there so no uh, solid particles can fall into the water tank. What are the safety features during reaction in system? Uh, can you please elaborate a bit more on that question? Uh, I mean, in a normal setup, uh, you can see these metal pieces up here and here. So normally we have a plastic cover here in any thing should happen like, like, I don't know, a tube comes off or something like that. Then the customer is protected from, uh, from the reaction zone. Um, the cartridge, the cartridges are pretty safe. Uh, you, they are in a sealed part. Uh, all stainless steel tube can resist much higher pressure than the operating pressure of the system. So it is, uh, I would say, more or less inherently safe. Uh, obviously, you're always working with chemicals, so you have to keep that in mind. There is only a little amount of hydrogen in the system at a certain time period. So, as I said, the system can generate 60 milliliters of hydrogen per minute. Uh, this is a fairly small amount and uh, the chance of an explosion, I would say, is negligible. Um, yeah. The, any alert provided by a by the instrument if by any means the hydrogen pressure increases suddenly due to instrument error. Uh, the hydrogen pressure cannot increase suddenly above uh, safe levels. What precautions chemists should take for longer longer life uh, time of the system? Keep the water always clean. After a run, make sure that you always uh, clean the reaction line with clean solvent. So just flush it through for some time. Be gentle with the screws if you are opening them. Uh, some people tend to have really strong hands and, and generally these screws doesn't need to be, uh, too strongly tightened. So most of them are kind of finger tight or a bit stronger than that. Um, I would say these would be my general advices. Uh, what are the outputs for data transfer? Uh, you can either use a USB stick to transfer data. Uh, and we also have uh, solutions to uh, to use the instrument with a third-party uh, application, so you can communicate with the instrument using TCP/IP protocol. Can we upgrade the software online? Uh, 
usually you don't need to upgrade the software uh, in some cases you can upgrade the software uh, online with the help of our or with the with the guidance of our service engineers but uh, usually the user doesn't need to to touch the software and I see no more questions, but I would like to take a, a final note, maybe, uh, about the HQ Pro and the HQ Mini Plus. So as you can see, the HQ Pro is a bit more complex. It knows a bit more, and obviously it uh, costs a bit more compared to the HQ Mini Plus. Uh, nevertheless, I would say that for most of uh, standard applications, so standard reductions of uh, of nitro groups, nitrile groups, deep protections, and so on, the H cube mini plus is absolutely fine. For uh, for studies like what the McCluskey group uh, did and Matthias showed in the in his presentation, for those really selective applications, you would probably need uh, the H cube Pro. Uh, the next question is um, about uh, cut uh, catalyst cartridge uh, recycling. So after the catalyst life is over, can we open uh, one end and fill with new catalyst, assuming that we have the packer and uh, sealing material? Uh, this is to avoid expensive stainless steel cartridge. I. <sighs> In principle, technically, you would be able to do that. I would not recommend uh, because uh, the ceiling on the other end can be damaged, contaminated as well. And I'm not sure about the pricing, but I would assume that, that the empty cartridges are not too expensive. What is the total reaction time? Uh, the total reaction time uh depends on uh, the specific reaction which you are performing so if we are talking about the residence time in the cartridge that is typically between let's say 10 seconds to 30 or 40 seconds if you are talking about the total process time so like how long does it take to reduce 100 milliliters of starting material then my answer is uh, that you have to divide the volume by the flow rate. So for example, with a one milliliter for per minute flow rate, it would take you 100 minutes to reduce uh, 100 milliliters of starting material, plus the time uh, which takes the instruments to stabilize and build up the pressures and so on. So let's say to reduce 100 mils of material, you would need maybe two hours, two, two hours and 20 minutes for the whole process, including all washings and, and so on. What is uh, the flow rate? What, sorry, what is, I'm having trouble with understanding a question. I assume that it is uh, about uh, the. I, I assume that the question is about what kind of flow rate should uh, one select. So the flow rate will depend on again on the reaction which you want to perform. Uh, I suggest to to look at uh, the last slides of Matthias' presentation where we ha where he had these general guidelines. Or, or consult our uh, website for more information. Yeah, I think that my colleagues are just showing that slide. Uh, usually, if you if you have a, a a bit tougher problem, just start with lower flow rates, harsher conditions, and then and then you can uh, quickly perform an optimization. 
Can the HQ be controlled by an external PC? Yes, it can be controlled. Is it enabled to use any other gases with the HQ Pro? Uh, yes, you can use other gases. You can connect the gas module to the HQ Pro, and then you can handle uh, a big variety of gases. Uh, what you should keep in mind that the HQ Pro is made from stainless steel. So you need to use gases which are compatible with stainless steel. Can you run a future demo with Phoenix connected to the HQ Pro to run reactions in series? Can Phoenix and HQ Pro be controlled and run parallel by a control system and software? So it is among our uh, plans for future demos to, to show such applications, yes. Okay, I think it is time uh, to finish. We thank you very much for your kind attention. Thanks a lot for uh, your questions. And we hope to see you during our next webinar in which we will focus on the PhotoCube. Thank you and bye-bye.